Hey guys, so a lot of people think that the US and Russia are separated by several thousand miles, right? But actually, they're a lot closer to each other than it seems. So the Diomede Islands are located in the Bering Strait, with the Ratmatav Island belonging to Russia and its fellow Krusenstern Island belonging to the USA. The distance between them is just two and a half miles. Today, you'll learn why it takes an entire day to get from one to the other, what the ice curtain is, and how the locals live in the changing climate conditions. So the Eskimos began settling the Diomede Islands over 3,000 years ago. The honor of discovering these places for Old Worlders belongs to Russian Orthodox explorer Semyon Dezdev. In 1648, he discovered the strait between Asia and North America, named in honor of Bering. Additionally, Desnev read about the two islands' locations. One of them was found by Vitus Bering in 1728, and both were later drawn on maps in 1732. So they received their modern Russian names later in the early 19th century, thanks to Russian Imperial Navy Lieutenant Otto Kotstep. In 1867, Alexander II sold Alaska to the Americans. At that time, they didn't see much use in those lands, and the upkeep to maintain them was quite high, so some extra cash wouldn't be much of a bother. The Russians received a mere $7.2 million from the U.S. for the deal. For comparison, a single three-story building in the middle of New York, built in 1782, called the Tweed Courthouse, actually cost the New York Treasury almost twice as much than the U.S. paid for all of Alaska. Additionally, Alaska is almost as large as Libya, which is the world's 16th largest country. Now, after Alaska was sold, state boundaries were drawn between the Diomede Islands. And at first, these changes didn't worry the locals. Residents in the Bering Strait region always considered themselves one people, up until 1948, as families living on different islands without any real problems sailing to each other. But after World War II, the relationship between the USSR and the USA worsened, to say the least, so the border was closed. Now, it often happens that politics cause simple people to suffer in such situations. Ratmanov started housing soldiers and the civilians needed to move to Siberia. Naturally, the government wasn't interested in their cooperation at all. And in the end, the border was called, dun dun dun, the Ice Curtain. Analogous to the Iron Curtain, the term that became popular thanks to Churchill, that also signified the beginning of the Cold War. Now, years went by and the so-called Ice Curtain started gradually thawing. On August 7, 1987, American swimmer Lynn Cox, who was previously able to swim across the English Channel, the Straits of Magellan, and swam around the Cape of Good Hope, swam the distance from the American island to the Soviet one. Now, the water temperature at the time was only 43 degrees Fahrenheit. The brave athlete was accompanied by Alaskans in kayaks. She swam for two hours and was congratulated by both countries' presidents, Mikhail Gorbachev and Ronald Reagan. Lynn Cox is often called the symbol of the Cold War's end. Now, in 1989, the country signed an agreement providing mutual travel between the Bering Strait Islands for the locals. The ice curtain finally shattered only in 2015, when the U.S. carried out all the formalities. According to the agreement, the Alaskan natives can now visit their relatives in the Chuki Peninsula and vice versa. They need to receive an invitation from the relatives on the other side in order to make the trip. They're allowed to stay with their family for up to 90 days. Now, it's hard to say where things are looking like in 2021 since there's really no information in the media about the situation. And as we mentioned before, the Diomede Islands are separated by a comically small distance of some 2.4 miles. But if you want to feel like a time traveler, going between them is an excellent way to accomplish that goal. See, the islands are separated by the international dateline and are in different time zones. The time difference is 21 hours to be exact, and the Russians are ahead of the Americans. So Ratmanov Island is sometimes called Tomorrow Island, and Christenstern Island is Yesterday Island. This fun fact became widely known to viewers in March 2021 
when a TikToker blogger uploaded a video explaining the fastest way to get to the U.S. from Russia by foot. However, he did tell a little white lie. Due to climate change, solid ice doesn't form between the islands like it used to. He also talked about the time difference. The video went viral, gathering millions of views, going on to be written about all over the media. So the unusual quality of the islands gives way to, shall we say, fantasy. For example, you could celebrate your birthday twice in one year, or start celebrating the new year on Ratmanov Island, and then go back in time to celebrate again on Kusinstern. Unfortunately, it's not so easy to travel between them. So Ratmanov Island currently has no permanent settlement, just soldiers. The first division of border guards arrived in 1941. They brought a six-room wooden building, a warehouse, and a bathhouse with them from Vladivostok with food, clothes, and weapons. Life is harsh in those conditions. Winter lasts nine months and comes with both extremely low temperatures and brutal winds. Additionally, the island is covered with a thick fog for 300 days a year making helicopters a rare sight. They can only come two to four times a month to bring food and mail. Most of the guards are in contracts, but they have main benefits of civilization with them, like TV, phones, and more. Christenstern Island, or Little Diomede as the Americans call it, has only one settlement, also called Diomede. When you see it from the sky, you'll feel like it's one of the most isolated places on the planet. It is home to a small society of Eskimos, a little over 100 in number. Now today, the island has about 30 buildings, including homes, built mostly in the 1970s and 80s. But despite its modest appearance, the settlement has a laundromat, a medical clinic above the laundromat, as well as a school with a view of the Russian island, a library, a helicopter pad, and a satellite antenna for TV, phones, fax, and internet. So the stores have a limited supply of food, drinks, clothes, firearms and ammo, and fuel. Now, if you can't find something in a local store, you can order it by mail, which doesn't come very often in the winter. Like in many other Alaskan native settlements, the import and sale of alcohol is forbidden. Electricity is provided by diesel generators, and water for the winter comes from a mountain source, which is then processed and stored in a huge reservoir. Now, due to the permafrost, laying pipes underground is difficult, so locals carry water by hand. Work on the island is mostly limited to the settlement. That means the post office, school, and doctor's office. And despite the high cost for food, the Eskimos who are already used to buying food don't depend on hunting and gathering for food too much. But some still gather eggs from the Guillemot, seabirds widely found through the Northern Hemisphere. They hunt walrus and make souvenirs that are popular in mainland Alaska. The average annual salary for a family on the island is about $25,000. Not very much because of the high prices and dependence on imports. For example, a normal box of laundry detergent costs $45. Life on the island overall is both hard and expensive. Recently, the changing climate is adding to their problems. Every year is becoming warmer, which makes their traditional lifestyle suffer. The islanders, especially the youth, have started slowly rethinking the settlement. But despite all that, the travelers note that the locals seem happier than many residents of large cities. Well, that's all for today. Leave a like, don't forget to subscribe, and let me know which side you'd want to live in, the Tomorrow Island or the Yesterday Island. And uh, we'll see you again next time.